child brides in Southwest Florida. I asked my usual questions. How old are you? How old is your child? Married and a mother. How old is the father? While in middle school. And it was at that point that I realized that this was not a normal paternity case. Children are being forced to marry grown men in Southwest Florida by their own parents, moving adult men into their pubescent daughters' bedrooms and expecting them to act as newlyweds. An astonishing Lee County custody case has brought this issue out into the open. And NBC2 investigator Rachel Polanski uncovered the victim is not the only one. That's right, Kelly and Peter. This young girl's parents and illegitimate husband came to the United States from Guatemala, which has one of the highest child marriage rates in Latin America. But she was born in the U.S. And even though she went to school in Lee County and gave birth in a local hospital, her life as a child bride remained a secret. In September 2016, a young woman made a heart-wrenching decision, calling deputies to reveal her deepest, darkest secret. When I was 13, my parents made me marry a 25-year-old man. Her pain so fresh she did not want her real voice or name used in our story. But these are her words spoken by another woman. I thought it would be just for a couple of days and then I realized it was going to be forever. The victim, who we'll call Anna, told me that she lived with a man in her bedroom in her parents' home while she went to middle school. My mom told me I had to learn how to cook for him, wash his clothes, do everything. She was only 13 and gave birth to his child a year later. For me, it was weird because I didn't know why my stomach was growing. She also did not know she was a victim until six years after her so-called marriage when she met attorney Tony Latino. I, I was in shock. Anna was fighting for custody of her child. My stomach turned. After she finally got the courage to leave her illegitimate husband. When I asked her how old the father was, she says, I think he's about 32 now. Latino had to explain to Anna that what happened to her wasn't okay. She was born in this country. She went to school here. She had no idea that she was being violated. We can call the matter of Antonio Juarez. Antonio Juarez was arrested in October, charged with lewd or lascivious battery. His attorney expects a plea deal next month. Did he know about the age of consent? He was completely unaware of it. And to many of us, that seems completely bizarre and, and impossible. He had no idea whatsoever. There was no intention whatsoever to break the law. It's not an excuse, but it's the truth. We wanted to know, could that really be the truth? A girl at age 14 getting married, that's common. Yes. Yes, it's common. Guatemalans who live in Southwest Florida, like Marta Matias, tell me what happened to Anna is typical. The more youngest the wife they're going to get, more they have to pay for because she is really young. In fact, in Guatemala, 30% of girls are married before the age of 18. When I found out about this case, I thought it was shocking. You didn't. No, it's normal. It's normal in Guatemala for a girl to be married. As soon as she gets her period, her parents will start looking for someone who's going to buy her once she starts menstruating. Janelle Grant is the founder of The Grace Project, which teaches family and reproductive health to indigenous, Latina, and farm worker women in Southwest Florida. Do you worry that there are similar cases happening right now, going undetected? I'm sure there are. Right here in Lee County? Right here in Lee County. Mm -hmm. That's why Grant and Latino want to get the word out. It's a form of slavery. So that young girls understand they have rights. In South Florida, it's a very big problem. And I think it's time that we do something about it. As for Anna, she's ready to move forward with her own child and end the cycle of abuse. Now, Anna told me that she hopes to go to college and become a medical assistant. As for the man who fathered her child, as part of his punishment, Anna's attorney wants him to record a PSA for local Spanish radio stations warning other Guatemalan men not to marry young girls. For the NBC2 Investigators, I'm Rachel Polanski. Did he know about the age of consent? He was completely unaware of it. The case of a grown man accused of marrying a 13-year-old girl comes to a head as that man makes a plea deal in court. The NBC2 investigators exposed the story last month. The child, born and raised in southwest Florida, was forced by her Guatemalan parents to marry. In an unofficial ceremony, she had the man's baby when she was only 14. As an adult, she escaped the situation and brought the crime to light when fighting for custody of her child. NBC2 investigator Rachel Polanski just got back from court with the outcome. 
Kelly Chad, 31-year-old Antonio Juarez, confessed to having sex with the victim when she was just a teenager. As part of his plea deal, he was sentenced to 12 years of state sex offender probation and no contact with the victim. The judge told him his punishment was below sentencing guidelines, but it's what the attorneys agreed to. A young girl forced to marry a grown man right here in Southwest Florida. When I was 13, my parents made me marry a 25-year-old man. When the NBC2 investigators interviewed her last month, her pain was so fresh, she asked us not to use her real voice or name in our story. But these are her words, spoken by another woman. I thought it would be just for a couple of days, and then I realized it was going to be forever. Her astonishing Lee County custody case brought the issue of child marriage out in the open. Do you worry that there are similar cases happening right now going undetected? I'm sure there are. Right here in Lee County? Right here in Lee County. The young woman's parents and illegitimate husband came to the U.S. from Guatemala, which has one of the highest child marriage rates in Latin America. But she was born in the U.S., and even though she went to school in Lee County, her life as a child bride remained a secret until she met attorney Tony Latino. When I asked her how old the father was, she says, I think he's about 32 now. The young woman was fighting for custody of her child, but Latino explained that her case was much larger than a custody battle. You understand the conditions of probation. Antonio Juarez went before the judge today, charged with lewd or lascivious battery, sentenced to 12 years of state sex offender probation. He is an illegal immigrant and it's likely that he will be deported. He understands that he may very well be deported. He may be here a few days. He may be here a few weeks. It may go a few years. I've seen cases even more serious than this one where uh, ICE has not picked up and deported the individual. Of course, as of a few months ago, I think things are changing, and once small possibilities are now almost infinitesimal. As for the victim, she wants Juarez to stay away from her and her child. Latino read a statement on her behalf. She feels that she was not the only victim in this matter, that the child was also a victim. The victim now has a petition to disestablish paternity in dependency court. Please leave them both alone. There was an interesting condition in Juarez's punishment. He will be required to record a radio PSA for local Spanish radio stations warning other Guatemalan men not to marry young girls. For the NBC2 Investigators, I'm Rachel Polanski. Child brides in Southwest Florida, young girls forced by their own families to marry grown men. A girl at age 14 getting married, that's common. Now the push to stop the practice. In America, it is illegal to have relations with a girl less than 16 years old. Seriously. The NBC2 investigators exposed the problem two months ago. A practice common in Southwest Florida communities. In some communities, young girls staying silent when forced into an adult world. Now there's a push to let everyone in those communities know it is not okay or legal. NBC2 investigator Rachel Polanski is here with this new development. Kelly Peter, in court about one month ago, 31-year-old Antonio Juarez confessed to having sex with a Lee County girl. She was just 13. As part of his plea deal, he was sentenced to sex offender probation and no contact with the victim. But there was also a special condition. He would be required to record a radio PSA warning other Guatemalan men not to marry young girls. Paisano. That's the voice of Antonio Juarez speaking in his native tongue. The radio PSA was recorded in Maya Canjobal, Spanish, and English. Men, if you think that you can arrange to marry a young girl here in Florida, be careful. It will be airing on local radio stations. Even when her parents agree, they and you could end up in jail. Why do you think it's so important that it gets out there in three different languages? Nobody makes public surface announcements in Maya Canjobal. So that is really going to call attention to thousands of people around here. Janelle Grant is the founder of the Grace Project which teaches reproductive health to Latina and farm worker women in Southwest Florida. Arranged marriages and child brides, that is the reality. An astonishing Lee County custody case involving Antonio Juarez brought the issue out in the open a few months ago. When I was 13, 
my parents made me marry a 25-year-old man. A young girl was forced to marry and live with Juarez in her parents' home while she went to middle school. I do believe there are more cases like this in Lee County. The criminal case wrapped up last month, but it shed light on an important cultural divide. In Guatemala, 30% of girls are married before the age of 18, and Antonio Juarez came to the U.S. from Guatemala. His attorney claims he did not know he was breaking the law. He was completely unaware. It's not an excuse, but it's the truth. Hey, girl, if an older man comes looking to marry you, be careful. There's also a version for girls, letting them know they don't have to marry. If you're less than 16 years old, the man could end up in jail because the marriage is illegal and it is rape. A PSA and a warning. This is very, very powerful. That what may be acceptable in other countries is not in America. It's good that he's meant to do this because that is what will reach his peers. Antonio Barras is also an undocumented immigrant with a fourth grade education. It is likely that he will be deported. As for the young girl, she tells me that she just wants to move on with her life and with her daughter. For the NBC2 Investigators, I'm Rachel Polanski. New at 6 from the NBC2 Investigators, a legal push to make it much harder for children to be forced to get married in Florida. This after NBC2 Investigator Rachel Polanski exposed this issue six months ago. And Rachel joins us now to explain the bill that was just filed today. Senator Elizabeth Benequisto and Senator Wilton Simpson filed the legislation this morning that would make it illegal to issue a marriage certificate to anyone under the age of 18. Our NBC2 investigation uncovered that there are many marriages between children and adults in Florida that aren't on the books, meaning a marriage license was never even issued. We followed the case of Antonio Juarez, a 25-year-old illegal immigrant from Guatemala who illegally married a 13-year-old Lee County girl in a ceremony at her parents' home. Juarez has since been charged and deported. Senator Benequisto says Florida has the second most married minors under the age of 16 in the country, and she hopes this bill will help change those numbers. Through the, the hard work of reporters like yourselves and advocates across the state, we've learned of all many cases where young girls are forced into marriage and that's just wrong while these girls should be learning how to navigate middle school and high school and be thinking about their very promising futures they're they're put into a life that gives them much fewer choice options for themselves now a series of educational PSAs have been on local radio stations to stop illegal child marriages here in southwest Florida. The legislation filed today to prohibit underage marriage licenses is in its infancy. But if it does pass, the law will take effect July 2018. We will follow its progress in the weeks to come. For the NBC2 Investigators tonight, I'm Rachel Polanski. A push to end child marriage in Florida after an NBC2 investigation. Our story exposed the problem after a girl in middle school in Lee County was forced by her parents to marry a much older man. After our story aired, Senator Lizbeth Benequisto filed legislation to end child marriages. Investigator Rachel Polanski broke the story months ago and is here with the bill that got its first hearing today. Senator Benequisto's bill would make it illegal to issue a marriage certificate to anyone under the age of 18. Our NBC2 investigation uncovered there are many marriages between children and adults that aren't on the books, meaning marriage licenses are never even issued. Florida has one of the loosest child marriage laws in the country. The statistics show that there are far too many children that are marrying in the ages, age ranges of 10 to 14. Right now, children aged 16 and 17 can be married with parental consent, and kids of any age can be married if pregnancy is involved. Senator Benequisto says that's not okay. Because there has been such abuse of young men and women to force them into marital situations that are not in their best interest, it is a protective measure for those children. And while the criminal case involving the young Lee County girl has wrapped up and the illegitimate husband has been deported, it shed light on an important cultural divide. A girl at age 14 getting married, that's common. Yes. Yes, it's common. In Guatemala, 30% of girls are married before the age of 18. And Guatemalans who live in southwest Florida tell the NBC2 investigators that this happens often, both in Guatemala and here in the United States. The more youngest the wife they're going to get, more they have to pay for because she's really young. The more oldest she is, 
she costs less. Now the bill passed the Judiciary Committee unanimously this afternoon. It has two more committees it has to go through before it goes to the floor for a vote. If it does pass, it will take effect in July 2018. For the NBC2 Investigators, I'm Rachel Plansky.